you know what? You guys think I do that on purpose. I was I was explicitly saying that I don't do that on purpose. Uh, yeah, no, I went to uh, I went to Taiwan. Um, and unlike India, uh, I mean, look, I had a time in India. I'm not gonna say it was a bad time. I'm just gonna say it was a time. Um, in Taiwan, mostly I had a good time. Um, Taiwan is a lovely country. Uh, you know, really, I think I think a way to describe it is just it's such a functional place. Uh, there, there is very little like if if you just want to chill. Um, Continue without sound, please. You know, you, you know, you know. I just, just. Uh, welcome, welcome, hype train. Oh, you got a math quiz today. All right, that's good. George is back. I never went anywhere. I did go to Taiwan though, and Taiwan was pretty cool. Um, you know, also, uh, very free, very free country. Uh, you can tell just a lot of things about it. I, I think in some ways it's more of a free country than America is. Um, they have their usual, you know. A few things about it really felt more free than America. Uh, one is that they use cash. I was going to go to China. Um, one of the reasons I didn't go was that I heard that it's very hard to pay with cash now. And like my WeChat account is blocked or some shit. I, I, I don't even know. I don't even know what I did, right? I'm really not trying to hate on China. I, I Look, I love China too. Um, but I'm saying Taiwan uh, felt very free, uh, which was cool. Uh, you pay for everything you pay in cash. Um, a good metric of how free a country is, is how easy it is to check into a hotel. Um, so, you know, you can, on, on one hand, you have places like Iceland where you show up and say, uh, hi, my name is George. Oh, George, here's your key. Uh, do you need my last name? No, nah, it's a small island. If you fuck with us, we'll come find you. And we're Vikings. Um, so Iceland's very free. Um, but yeah, Taiwan, things were very easy as well. Uh, you, can, you can go to 7-Eleven in Taiwan and uh, you can you can buy two beers and you can sit there and drink the beers uh, so you know that's just that's just very chill and it shows a country that really uh, you know, kind of has a lot of trust in their people I, I didn't see many uh, it's not like the same level of CCTV cameras you see here uh, I can go to some countries now and they're covered in CCTV cameras um, yeah, so, you know, and also uh, totally free internet. Um, there's like a website that ranks the uh, the freedom of the uh, of the internet. And uh, Taiwan was very highly ranked. And, you know, you just like, you go to South Korea, they block porn, you know? Go to Pornhub in South Korea. It's like, uh, for your for your protection, the paternalistic authority of Korea has said no porn for you. Um, is it China or not looking? Yeah. <laughs> That's, that's, uh, I'm not here to make semantic things. Uh, I'm just going to say you don't need a visa to go and you do need a visa to go to China. Um, I don't know. And also this might just be, I'll tell this story. Um, you know, a bunch of people in Taiwan were like, oh, you know, China, it's, it's really hard to, to pay for things as a foreigner. Uh, you're only going to be able to buy things in the train station. And I'm like, oh, really? It used to be all cash. I've heard now it's, it's just a hardcore WeChat uh, for everything. I, this may be wrong, though. And I'll give an example of why I think it may be wrong. Um, again, this is from people in Taiwan that I heard this. Uh, so there's a city in uh, Malaysia called Johor Bahru. And the city is right across the border from Singapore. And if you go online and you read forum posts about Johor Bahru, uh, it looks terrible. Looks like a terrible place. You're going to step foot in there. You're going to get murdered, robbed, raped. Everything terrible is going to happen to you in Johor Bahru. And then you try to find some objective statistics on Johor Bahru. And I'm quiet. Um, it turns out that, you know, I can turn this up a little bit. Uh, it turns out that Johor Bahru is not really dangerous. It turns out that this is just Singaporeans talking. Um, and Singaporeans uh, have a very uh, low uh, threshold for, for, for danger. Um, so yeah, I went to Johor Bahru and it was uh, it was more than fine. I, I was expecting like the Tijuana of Malaysia. Um, there was not. Uh, there will be a time when humans completely abhor porn. I don't know about you, bro. <laughs> um, I know, you know, 
put, I'm not, you don't have to watch it. Point's a choice. But, it, you know, it's, 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 it's hey. Uh, what's the story from? I forget where I heard this story, but uh, a guy gets into a cab in, uh, in Egypt. Uh, and he's sharing the cab with somebody else. And the other guy is, uh, is uh, smoking, uh, smoking hashish. Uh, and he, you know, starts talking about how, uh, you know, he supports the Muslim Brotherhood. And, um, yeah, I think it was like a New York Times reporter who got into the cab and he said, hey, uh, you know, if uh, those guys win, you're not going to be able to, to do that anymore. And he's like, yeah, I want to stop. And I need the government to stop me. So, I mean, maybe that's how some people feel about porn. And for you, there's authoritarian, repressive governments. Um... No, I mean, look, <laughs> Singapore, you know, you go to some countries like Iceland and you can also like people in Iceland would like leave their phone at the stool at the bar uh, just to, uh, they'd leave their phone just, just to mark their seat. And, you know, it's, that's insane to me. Uh, but you don't really understand how like Iceland works like this, right? Like Iceland's a very safe country too. Uh, up there with Singapore, but there's nothing in Iceland you can like learn about how to make a safe country except for like be small, be an island, be ethnically homogenous, and be rich, right? Like all those things are are good. Uh, but Singapore is actually a incredible how-to manual. Um, if you also would like to not have crime in your country, you can just look at what Singapore did and copy it. It's very effective, and I actually think that the trade-offs are way less bad than than people think. And I'll give you an example. Um, when I saw a, uh, I w walked by an apartment building and there was a poster outside and the poster had two people's pictures on it and said, these people live here and are known for shoplifting. I like it, right? Like, I, I mean, imagine we did this in America. Um, Singapore is hella authoritarian. Yes, they are, but I mean, yeah, you know, <laughs> you can talk about, you can talk about the repressive nature of, of, of Singapore, of China, and of India, right? Um, and they all have different things that are kind of repressive and I would probably you know, want to like, if I really had to uh, choose countries to live in, it would be in that order, right? Um, you know, I haven't been to China since COVID uh, and I hope that a lot of what I've been hearing is just like fear mongering and stuff because I spent a lot of time in China. I lived there for about a year when I was younger. And um, you know, when I was there, it was a very free country. Uh, the early 2010s, China were was maybe the most capitalist country, like ever to exist. Um, the picture stuff would never work in a shameless country like Brazil. Yeah, but you know, you could do. Brazil's a harder one to fix. <laughs> Um, no, I don't know. I, you know, I, yes. when even my mother says it's time to crack down on crime, we, we got to do something about the crime in America, man. You know, it's not that hard to fix. We just got to do it. Oh, South Africa. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. Okay. Um, these are, by the way, two countries I won't go to. Uh, I will not. I definitely won't go to South Africa. Brazil, if I'm with the right people, going to the right places, maybe. Uh, but both of those countries have extremely high murder rates. Um, if I'm with the right people, going to the right places, I'd go to Brazil. Uh, you know, if like someone has family there, you know, someone who knows the area, but I wouldn't just set foot in Brazil. Um, try Mongolia. I've been to Mongolia. Um, <laughs> I, mean, I don't know what you want me to say. It's a frozen desert. For some reason, I pictured lush, snowy forests. Not like frozen sand desert. 
Um, but that's what Mongolia is. Also somewhat polluted, unfortunately, um, because the people like burn stoves and their gurs. I'm not, no, South Africa, fuck no, bro. Um, yeah, I mean, look, anyone who's honest understands what happened in South Africa, right? Uh, I know what we should do. Oh, God, I said I wasn't going to be controversial. Oh, I wouldn't have done any code yet. We just, I was coding all morning and then I come on stream and, you know, I, I just, you know, I want to talk to you guys, catch you up. I haven't seen you in a while. Um, try Mongolia in summer. I'm trying to think of when I actually went. I think it was kind of summer. It was like August, I think. Um... Oh, oh, my new, my new chair. Uh, I did. I got a new chair. Uh, no, I was just spray painting my old chair black. What do you think? Yeah, they can't even provide electricity. Yeah, yeah. Well, look, I mean, what happened in South Africa happened in Zimbabwe 10 years earlier, right? Like, it's, it's. But um, I know what we should do. We should give more grants backed by free money government to minority-owned businesses. That is exactly what will turn around our declining empire. We have an empire in decline. We are going to give grants to minority-owned and women-owned businesses. And then that's going to fix our empire, right? Right? Isn't that what's going to... Don't you guys want to fix the empire? Isn't that the idea? Oh. Oh, oh you... You, you don't want to fix the empire. Oh, that, that's, that's, and you're in charge and you want, oh, oh, I understand now. Okay, okay, I understand. Look, we just have different goals here. That, that, that's cool. Um, that's right, that's right. We, we, we must, we must give, uh, you know, free money to, 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 uh, you know, women and minorities, hey? It's not going to fix it, right? Uh, oh, no, oh, no. It's not, it's not, it's not your goal to fix it? Oh. Uh, yeah, can, 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 we, uh, can we get someone who, who, who wants to fix it? Can, can, we, can we get someone who wants to fix it and put them in charge? I think maybe we all kind of want to fix it. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> um, Okay, I'll engage with this for a minute. You should subscribe. I just want to dismantle our late stage capitalist society by any means necessary. Is that so bad? Well, have you, have you thought about what you might want to replace it with, right? Have, have, you, have you thought about what, what might happen instead communist utopia ah communist utopia oh, i understand now <laughs> fully automated space luxury communism 21st century man i just want our society to be in a perpetual crisis but somehow we uh got off on a, on a tent you guys uh you know what? You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna go off. I'm gonna I'm gonna state my political party preference right now. Nobody pisses me off more than fucking Republicans, man. You know? You know? <laughs> At least the other guys, you know what you're gonna get, right? At least the other guys are honest. <laughs> Um, let's go into coding. Let's, let's go into coding. Mm. <laughs> Elon Musk is a republic? Elon Musk is... Bro, like, are you the next Caesar or what? We put too much on the man. I don't know. 
you just can't like the most interesting thing is what's gonna happen uh, you know I can move to Taiwan so I, was, I thought I, I really like I was then I was like kind of bored I was like what am I gonna do here all day you know but I, I'm just gonna say the Taiwan bike trip and the, the India aborted bike trip yeah I mean it was cool look it was cool to see India in Taiwan I ate every piece of food that I wanted from anywhere street food bubble tea didn't get remotely sick uh, you know, really, really a wonderful country, and uh, everyone should go check it out. And uh, you know, maybe instead of uh, instead of giving our, uh, our 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 war our war chest and war dollars to go fight, uh, you know, that guy, we should uh, think about uh, you know <laughs> Taiwan. Uh, Taiwan. Did I say Thailand? If I got them mixed up, uh, Thailand's overrun with overrun with Farang. Too much farang, man. Um, no, no, it's not. It's not like the Ukraine situation. And let me explain why. All right. Wait. They're at war and it's up. Oh, I guess if a lot of people leave. Okay. Okay. Bro, that's older. GDP's up more. All right, all right, all right. Look, I don't know what happens. Uh, Mario Bain, thank you, thank you for for gifting uh, subs. You know what the problem is with politics? You can't make everyone happy. Unless, who doesn't like progressives, right? I'm a progressive and hopefully everyone likes me. Are you cool? Yeah, you subscribed, that's cool. You're not as cool as Mario Bin who gifted 10 subs and can ask a question. Nobody likes progressives, ugh. Oh, should I be a conservative? Do people like definitely nobody likes conservatives? Is that sarcasm? No, I'm I'm very serious. I have very strong political opinions that I hold very strongly. And I care about causes and issues. You guys know about my deep-seated care for causes and issues. Like, like, you know, what's a cause? Does someone have a cause? Fuck you, this hellhole is forgotten by God. What country are you talking about? Ugh, libertarians, I roll. Oh, Marvin, well, that's it. What country, what country do we want to visit next? I, I'm thinking uh, next bike trip's gonna be Eastern Europe. It's gonna be like uh, Poland, Estonia, Finland. I heard good things. Uh, yeah, Romania, right around there. I, 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 Romania's interesting. Romania is interesting. Um, I don't know if they'll let me into Belarus. Do I need like a Russian visa for that? Um, my Andrew Tate arc, where I moved to Romania, become a pimp and get arrested for sex trafficking. Uh, sorry, I, I didn't mean to slander him. If he's not a pimp, I, 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 don't, I don't know how Andrew Tate refers to himself. Um... Wait, I can call the Balkans a shithole. I, I think they're mostly, uh, I've been to Serbia, I've been to Hungary. Like, I've been to countries that are shitholes. Uh, and uh, those countries are, I mean, I avoid like the real, like there, there's, some, there's some countries that are like, like again, there's countries that are too high crime or just like, if you have a country that has less than a thousand dollars GDP per capita, like, Oh my god. Um, 
The worst part about Europe is South Italy. I, I would say that I did not... Uh, Milan was acceptable. The rest of Italy, Florence, they wouldn't let me into the library. The library was only for citizens. And then I realized why, because this country's covered in tourists, it's hot and humid, and why the fuck am I here? Um, Italy and Portugal, yeah. Um, I was in Germany and the lights were dim and it didn't feel like they had a lot of power there. But overall, I like Germany. Um, am I talking about Brazil? I've never been to Brazil. Uh, wow, we're really, we're really off topic. Um, I should go to South Africa and enjoy this communist utopia. <laughs> hey, you know where's communist and cool? Vietnam. I don't think they're really communist, but they say it's... Actually, I think it's the Socialist Republic of Vietnam. It's out of my passport. I have never been to Africa. Merriman, thank you for gifting more subs. But yeah, I think I think we're gonna do uh, we're gonna do an Eastern Europe trip next. Uh, abstractions.py is up to date with the whole lazy buffer changes, and thank you for bringing things back. Neural FPS, thank you for gifting subs. Uh, Brazil is about seven k GDP per capita. I mean, that's not too poor. Um, I liked Spain. I, I liked Spain. I had issues with Portugal. Um, what's the simple irrelevant question? We're, we're, we're pretty far off topic. Um, oh, you guys have heard my Portugal rant before. We don't need to. We don't need to get into Portugal. Rude, rude, rude AF. Look, we don't need to get into Portugal. I just, just multiple things. I was just like, yeesh. Yeah, the numbers said Milan was safe, but I didn't feel safe everywhere I walked there. Um, how will the shipping be handled for non-U.S. citizens? Well, I don't care if you're a U.S. citizen. <laughs> um, if, you're, if you're an illegal immigrant, I'm happy to sell you a tiny box. Um, if you'd like it shipped outside the U.S., I'm not sure. I think that I'm going to say no, but you're welcome to use a forwarding service. Comma... Look, I'm probably just gonna use Comma to do all this fulfillment and we can probably just use Comma's logistics. The numbers say Stockholm is safe. Trust me, this place is not safe. You sure that's not propaganda? I was in Sweden recently. I mean, it depends what you mean by not safe. Um, I know that people in Sweden, I know there's like a, there's people in Sweden who complain about the immigrants. Uh, I, look, I'm, I don't live there. I, I don't really know uh, what the real situation is. I know when I went there, I didn't see, it looked way less fucked than America. I'll tell you that. I get attacked by beautiful blonde women, eh? Um, poor safety policies in Sweden, man? Yeah, I, I felt very safe in Sweden. Uh, I felt very safe in Denmark. I like Denmark. Um, yeah, I like I like the Nordic countries. I, I do. Uh, I liked Iceland a lot. I heard also like Sweden did some like really base stuff with the media, like told the media that if they were gonna like sow discord, then they don't get money anymore or something. I, I, I heard something on a podcast once about this, and I, I thought, oh, yeah. well, I forget exactly how they did it, but I was like, hey, that's smart. Bad people went there. Um, I've been to Dubai. Uh, Dubai blocks porn. That's just factual. Um... Look, I, I, you know, I, I, I said when I was there, like, look, I have, I have 
again, I have a lot of respect for this culture and what it managed to build, right? Like you, you look at like the, the, the Burj Khalifa, how could I not respect uh, a culture that's capable of building that, right? Like, you know, America, $2 billion to build like a mile of subway. Dubai uses Bangladeshi, you know, uh, work visa labor and gets things done, right? And I actually respect that. I, I respect that. I certainly don't have a problem with it. Um, the poop trucks, wasn't that fake? <laughs> Dubai was very clean and nice. <laughs> um, the culture slaves. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You know, honestly, I see things like that. I think it's just people jealous that they don't have a big building. <laughs> you only got a big building because you have slaves. Yeah, they have a big building, okay? Um, I, I don't think they're slaves. I, I think that... I've looked into this a bit, and I have my opinions on it. Um, Uh, you guys know my take on, oh, wow, we're at the Jews now. We're really, this has really got to stop. You know my take. There's a great take on the Jews. It's like, Jews are an easy scapegoat because you'll find them at the top of like every political movement because they're smart, right? Like they, to believe that there is one Jewish agenda, right? Like if anything, as far as a, as a, as a group goes, the amount of diversity within Jews, um, is, uh, you know, you'll find Jews everywhere politically. Um. What? <laughs> <laughs> But they built a big building. You don't understand. Where's America's big building, okay? We had two big buildings. Funny, bro. Uh... Yeah, I mean, really, peak America was 2000 America. Neom City, is it the one that's a line? <laughs> uh, so you're more or less confused about the direction Tiny Grad's going. No, I, a lot's figured out. I, I'm putting this schedule API that I really like, and I am going to demo it. I promise we are going to code today. Uh, Trump didn't build a wall, okay? Like, that's that's... I loved the wall. I thought the wall was an incredible project. Uh, I just thought that everything about the wall was just like, we're gonna, like America, we're gonna put America back to work. We're gonna, we're gonna get people out there laying down bricks. I just think about like the story I tell myself is like, you know, you, you, you have a family who like, you know, their parent, the drug addicts and the life's bad, they're unemployed. And then they move to the border and start building the wall. They get clean, they put Becky in school. Like the wall could have turned people's lives around, but no, we didn't get a wall. And like, we were really, where America is incapable of building a wall. Really? Really? We can't build a wall? What is outside the walls? Uh, people eating random street food in your country. You're talking about India? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We were so careful and I still got a bit sick. Um... Nope. Unable. America couldn't build a wall. America's <laughs> debt is increasing a million dollars per minute. That sounds about right. No, like when you look at the national debt, you realize that like how many how many tens of thousands of dollars does every citizen have to pay to pay it back? We simply don't know how to build it. No, the Vegas beer is an advertisement. We could have made the wall an ad. 
um, pay it back. Well, you, yeah, I mean, it could go bust, man. Just hyperinflate the debt away. Yeah, you understand everyone pays it back then, right? No, I have been a little... Okay, all right, all right. We're going to... Two more minutes on this. I've been a little sad about... Like, I live in a declining empire, right? Like, you have the Dutch, the British. There's a video about this. It's Ray Dalio's video. And then you have America, and then you have China, right? And, like, I live in a declining empire. I can't move to the new empire, uh, because unfortunately, and I don't mean this in like a derogatory way, but they are racist, right? Like that empire is not for me. Um, I don't think it's a good policy. You know my thoughts on racism. I think racism is a dumb policy. Uh, I think that, you know, what you want is something a lot more like IQism. Um, oh, India is definitely not the new empire. I promise you it's not. <laughs> Uh, what's wrong with America? I mean, it's just declining. The Chinese century, yeah. When debate number two, oh my Doomer debates. Guys, the Doomers are right, you know? <laughs> I mean, they're sorta of right and they're sorta of wrong. Like, everything I said in the debates, I, I agree with. Um, but like, as far as the obsolescence of humanity when you have super intelligent AI like no fucking shit of course uh, okay you think more of an India century than a China one I don't know if you're saying that to trigger me have you been to India China is asshole. <laughs> well, hey man, I'm sorry, but they make, if their empire is bigger than yours, do you know how we don't make any movies for Kenya? Like Hollywood doesn't make any movies for Kenya. They don't take Kenya's opinion uh, into consideration and it's because Kenya's poor. Right? But if China has more spending power than America, guess who the movies are gonna be made for? Not for you. Doesn't matter if it's an American company, right? We're globalist. We're a globalist empire, right? China's a nationalist empire. Um, I mean, different. No more. Bo I saw a Bollywood movie. It was pretty good, actually. I mean, you know, it is what it is, but. Um, the new seven nanometer chip technology? Like, I don't know why people are saying it's fake. Like, it's real. But the Asian, just watch Asianometry. They have good stuff about this. Ireland. I, Ireland, I love Ireland, man. Talking about countries in Europe, I love. Uh, I had a wonderful time there. Um, Having been to India, like, look, they may be next, but not soon. If you don't hear the Portugal rant, you're leaving. Wow, we have 636 people watching this. Wait, avoid it like the plague? It's a propped up GDP whore tax haven for mega corporates? I mean, yeah, it's a tax haven, but like, it's a nice country. I loved Ireland. Uh, what, are you, what are you trying to tell me is bad? What are the countries I love in Europe? I mean, look, Ireland, UK, but mostly the North. Um, like the whole, like the Newcastle area, I think is cool. Uh, the Netherlands, nice place. Uh, 
I mean, those are my favorite countries in Europe. Like, there's some that are tolerable, like Germany and France, except not Paris. Um, and Spain's okay. And then, like, at the bottom, you have, like, Portugal and Italy, right? Um, what countries do I like in the Middle East? I've only been to Dubai. Uh, I've only been to Dubai. It was cool. I went there. It was Ramadan. And, uh, all this stuff was open late. The food was great. The hotel was cheap. It's a nice place. <laughs> you know, <laughs> there were many things that were actually extremely libertarian about India. Um, chill, man. It's a Friday vibe. Uh, all right, let's go. Subscriber only. Argentina is the next Venezuela. No, actually, didn't their GDP like peak? All right, we're done with countries. Okay. So, uh, this is already in Tiny Grad. Uh, this is running ResNet 50. So, you can see that it's taking 439 milliseconds to run a batch 64 ResNet 50. Um, that's like the walk-off time. And we're only getting one teraflop. So this has an 11 teraflop GPU. We should be able to get a lot more. So, let's make a new file here. Hand-coded ResNet. Um, opt. Let's take a look at model eval.py. So this is ResNet 50 here. Take a quick look at the size of this tensor. Should be able to do model X, okay? But actually, uh, so this shouldn't actually run anything because that's all. Because again, Tiny Bread's lazy, so this should be really fast. Okay, because it's pretty fast. Um, and if I run it with debug equals two, you can see no kernels actually run. Okay, so this is the new API. We can get the tensor underlying. Oh, we should say that this returns a tensor. Now see the lazy data turns that color. Uh, and this is the new API called schedule and we can get a schedule here and we can look through the schedule and we can do something like that. Okay, so the schedule is the op, the out, and the input. Um, so if we do like op.op, op, we can see what, okay, cool. So these are all the uh, kernels in the ResNet. You can see here that there's 58 of them. Um, so let's filter out all the load ops. Mm. 
load offs are just like loading tensors from uh, load offs are just like you see this like load op rand that's just like where the weights come from okay okay good um Why are there so many of them? Oh, some of these just must be model and knit things. Interesting. This one should be shorter then. Create a new tensor. Mario, thank you for gifting more subs. Okay, 60. Uh, that makes a lot more sense. Okay, cool. Now if we filter the load ops out of there, we're going to get 59. Okay, beautiful. Okay, so we do have to run the model twice. I'm going to just put this all in one line. These are all the operations uh, for the ResNet. These are the, see, and this is the power of like the new tiny grad abstractions. I'm really happy with this one. Um, Mario, I'm happy to take on topic questions. Uh, okay, so this binary ops max is not actually, this is only the last op. So you'll see if I print these ops, they look a lot bigger. Um, we can go, there's a really cool debugging thing that was submitted called print tree. And we can do print tree uh, on the op. All right, so these are each of the operations of the, uh, of the ResNet 50. Okay. So, now, if we're actually going to want to run these, let's load up Ops Metal here. Uh, the only linearizer option? I guess it is. Okay, so all of these Ops are linearizable. So the linearizer takes in an Op and we'll output code if you want. We don't actually have to go all the way to code either. Um, okay. So that's the AST. That's the linearizer options. We can say lin equals that, and we can say lin.linearize, and that will return uops. Actually, I don't think this actually returns uops. I think it just sets uops, which kind of sucks and should probably be cleaned up. Um,
so this is each one of the uh, kernels now linearized into the linearizer. I, I'm just, I'm blown away by how good these abstractions are. They're so simple. And this should have the ability to be really fast. Like now it's kind of time to focus on speed. Um, seems strange that the init does a lot of ads. Uh, that's actually, those are randoms. They, they weights are initialized randomly, but the randomness is, is an ad. It, it's just, it's just like, we can look at them if you care. Um, but they're just initialization. They don't really matter. Like, okay, you see what I mean? Like here, I, you know what? I'll just show you the function. We can just, it's really simple. I'll just go through it, okay? So this is the conv. You see that the conv is initialized with k-ming uniform. This is k-ming uniform, and you see that math? Uh, well, it's actually just tensor.uniform, so that's the math. But it's this, and this is that ad right there. So it's, you say it's strange that the init does a lot of ads. It's actually plus low right there. Um, but this is all fused into one thing. Make sense? Okay. So we can also uh, get the renderer from Metal um, from TinyGrad Runtime Ops Metal import renderer. All right, and now if we want to render this, um, what is it called? Is this, when does that get emitted? Is that emitted there or do I have to linearize it? So you see, these are all the display names of the kernels. Um, this is the new abstractions.py. This is a great intro to like how the abstractions are now lifted um, out of TinyGrad and you can use them externally. Uh, I have another, where have I set display name? Display name has colors, function name, okay. Uh, so we wanna do renderer sub uh, lin.function name and then the uops. Um, and this should just return code. Okay, there you go. Now we have the code for each one of those kernels. Now, you're gonna notice that, guys, show me a library that can do shit like this. You know, like TVM can kind of, but I, I think these are just the cleanest abstractions anywhere for these neural network libraries, right? And you can then go in and like edit all this and it's all like exposed. Okay, um, so you'll see that these, I posted a picture like this on Twitter and people were complaining, well, that's not a very optimized kernel. Look at that stupid loop. Well, yeah, because you gotta run the optimizations, okay? So I can run them by doing lin hand code optimizations. And now you see that the, uh, the kernels don't look so nice anymore. Um, but they are still kernels. Okay, uh, now we wanna actually benchmark these. So let's put these into the runtime. Where's ops metal? Metal program. Function name, code, uh, prog. We still call it with a global size and a local size, but I think those things are on the linearizer now. This actually might bitch me out. Yeah, this is actually wrong. We're gonna, let's fix this. Um, there's... In ops, I do like a fix of the sizes somewhere. Here are these launch dims. I should put 
put this in the linearizer. So those are the uh, those are the sizes. Put the fixes for them here. Put that on one line. That's fine. Whatever. Uh, okay. So now we have the sizes. Now we can run the program. Uh, okay. We need buffers. Um, so, in order to make buffers, uh, we can get np.st.size. Okay. Um, create output buffer, out equals out.st.size, um, metal. metal we have raw metal buffer here oh, this is this video is by far the best intro to tiny grad now um, Create the output buffer. Let's create input buffers. you want to run the program we just pass in a global size lin dot global size lin dot local size uh, the buffs and we'll also say weight equals true so we can benchmark it uh, and this is the time Okay, let's run it three times, five times. By the way, I also want to just fix that was bothering me. Uh, that's in ops. Be 36, really? Kernels are getting such long names now. Uh, 
that also shouldn't be three. I should be a little more careful about that and not write three. Um, it's not three, it's length uh, self.obs. No, it's not those actually. Three is fine. Do we use hand code in the other place? I just lost my. Actually, let me copy that logic because it's uh, the colors make length not work right. So it's just this. I'm gonna move print tree to helpers. Nosy bracket. There we go. I'll note that this is actually kind of wrong and doesn't accurately reflect due to caches because in caches these are uh, well, these are always guaranteed to be different buffers so I guess it doesn't matter but really I should like create them properly uh, but we're not going to do that because it doesn't matter okay um, Total is 430 milliseconds. Is that about what we were seeing here? Yeah, about what we were seeing there. Okay, cool. It's a little faster because we're running them multiple times and that's making all the caches hot. Okay, um, now unfortunately some of these kernels suck. Now it's hard to tell which ones suck, but we can find this out. Uh, there's a way to get info. Do I save that or do I not save that? Yeah, self.info. Flops times 1e minus 9 divided by time is gigaflops. Okay. So. Stupid. 
Okay. So now we can see each kernel, exactly how many get, wow. Dude, how nice is Tiny Grab? Can, can, let's just admire it for a minute. Like, and this is not a contrived example at all. This is a ResNet 50. I can also put the whole ResNet 50 backward pass in this. And now it's really easy to see which ones suck. These ones suck really badly. Like this one's sick, bro. And it should be pretty repeatable. Yeah, it's pretty repeatable, right? So this one's fast. Wait. How repeatable is it? I don't know. This one is 20 times. I was going to make it slow. Only for the slow ones. Okay, 10's a good compromise. How do you go back from the kernels to the code? What, you wanna see the code? Let me just print the code. Unfortunately, the code is complex bullshit for various reasons. Um, but okay, so I said we were gonna optimize things. And we're gonna do just that. This kernel looks like the worst offender. Oh, well, first off, let me show you what happens if I disable the optimizations. Oh, this one? Yeah, this kernel's bad, but it's not, it doesn't take much time. Like it's it's not a it's not many ops. This is what happens if you disable the optimizations entirely and you run slow garbage. This is brutal. Uh, I can also try disabling the tensor course. So we have a magic environment variable for that. And you see now they look different because they don't have tensor cores. <laughs> and it's about the same time with and without the tensor cores. So that's with the tensor cores. And you can see that this pattern here is the tensor cores. Some of them get brutally slow because of the tensor cores. Uh, Can I do this? And if that's allowed, I just love Python. Is that actually allowed? Damn, I love Python. I can't believe I put that use tensor core crap everywhere. 
and get out of crap. Okay, now let's do some optimizing. Now we have an optimizer. Now let's see if we can do better. Um, I love Python too. Like just, just like that you can write that and it works. Oh, Python. Okay. Uh, oh, oops. the same thing twice 36 is too short 37 37 dicks 37 dicks should we just go to 40 I mean, it's kind of offensively many See how we did. Just in trying the tensor cores and not trying the tensor cores. Oh, yeah, buddy. Look how much faster that is. And we didn't even try. You know how much more you can do in hand coded optimizations? See? Notice how these ones now don't use the tensor cores. Wow, and it's already so much faster. Oh, that's so cool. Okay, you want to figure out why this one doesn't have any gigaflops? All right, we can look at that one. Why not write an optimizer? Oh, we got a thinker over here. He's thinking. It's a smart idea, bro. Let's do it. Best coding we've done in a while, boys. Mad Dog Nation, thank you for gifting subs. 34. Damn.
I'm pretty happy with that. It's pretty fast, boys. Thank you, Mad Dog Nation. Do you have a question? That's it. That's today's stream. It's morning. It's light outside. Excuse me, test pass. Uh, so we went, we shaved a lot of speed now. Okay, okay, okay. All right, all right, all right. We're gonna do, we're gonna do, we're gonna do one more. We're gonna do one more. Um, okay, we're going to create a quick helper function called benchmark linearizer. Uh, it's going to take in a linearizer and it's going to return a time. Thank you. Love positivity. Okay, let's benchmark linearizer and then actually Okay, still works. Okay, let's figure out why one sucks so much. Okay, so this one, or I don't know, should we focus on the slowest one? Let's focus on the slowest one, and then I'm gonna push this file as a challenge to you guys. Why does this one suck? That was aggressive with the... Uh... Now we can like print the two choices. Okay. Wow, that's even more brutal without the tensor course. That one doesn't even use tensor course. All right, so the top one is without the tensor cores and the bottom one is with. Most of them are faster with, but like this one is faster without. And those little ones don't matter. Okay, do um, you want to hand look at kernel one? I don't need this function. I kind of don't like the function. 
functions uglify your code. We also have stuff that we can just do generically, like create the input output buffers. Now, should we hand focus on one of these? All right, you wanna look at this one and see why it's slow? Let's look at that one and see why it's slow. So if i not equal to one, uh, continue, back there. Okay, let's focus on why this one sucks. to be worse. Let's print the code. It doesn't even use the tensor course, it doesn't matter. Okay. 45, 56, 3, 3. And we're splitting 56 into 7 and 8, and we're splitting that there. Um, yeah, I think this is probably a smart way to do it, okay? So this one's bad. So let's, let's also first off just say if i equals 1, we'll do this here. with and without. Uh, we can also put linearized down here. Okay. Um, so these hand-coded optimizations, we can actually do them by hand if we want. Um, so we have one input buffer. Uh, let's look at the buffer ops. So we want to do uh, op dot get lazy ops uh, for x in op get lazy ops if x dot op equals no. buffer ops. Okay, so we'll call them bops. Uh, x for x. Who uses dot filter? So, I'll show you what these buffer ops look like. None? No, that's not right. Thought, uh, oh, in buffer ops, what am I doing? Okay. Okay. So this is the input here. It's a multi view shape tracker. Well, that's disgusting. Let's start with that being a problem. So 
so this is the shape tracker. This defines the uh, this defines the shape. Oh, uh, sorry. This defines the shape. Now it's a multi-view shape tracker, which sucks. Well, because look at all this complex stuff here that it's generating. I mean, it's not that complex. And, okay, let's first... Um, let's first replicate... Okay. Actually, I didn't have to do this with that. That was stupid. I, I could just... It's much easier for me to just say lin.sts. Uh, And why did I get the buffer ops? We definitely don't need the buffer ops. The linearizer will do this for us. Uh, process should just be removed. Process is stupid. Okay. So this is showing me the two. Oh, I'll get rid of debug equals three. This is showing me the two shape trackers. So you see the output shape tracker is always contiguous, and then you have the input shape tracker. Uh, which is not always contiguous. Let's also display lin dot. Uh, I'm just gonna copy this out of off so I display the global size. And then, oh, this is terrible. So this is showing me the global size and the local size. Um, you can see now the global size is, uh, well, there's no local size, which is going to cause you problems. Um, you also like this has a complicated looking mask. This is probably why it's really slow. Okay, first off, you want to replicate the hand. Let's replicate the hand coded optimizations first. Okay, so what is the hand coded optimization doing? Um, it's reshaping it. Well, I don't even know what it's permuting. Well, it's definitely upcasting the final two dimensions. So I can just show you what that looks like. Um, we can go in and you see how now these are three, three, those are nested loops. So I can say something like lin.upcast. I just want to do it twice. Well, yeah, I can show you what it looks like once. Right, if, I, if I do it once, one of the loops is unrolled. Um, if I do it twice, both loops are unrolled. But I actually think that gets me nothing because that's probably automatically being done by the optimizer. Now we can go even further. We can unroll another loop. You want to unroll another loop? No, oh, it sucks even more. Okay, cool. Um, so those are upcasted dimensions. Now let's do a before we do that actually we'll do a lin dot reshape and permute. Uh, new shape function's kind of stupid, actually. But I guess I have to do it. So these are like doing the optimizations by hand. 
see, like. You know what? It'll probably help if I just start by reshaping it to the real size. Um, so there's only two reduced dimensions, and it's though it's the last two. So I can say like x uh, minus two colon. Um, well, I show you that that does nothing. Uh, we can actually say none for the uh, axis we're commuting. Yeah, this this optimization stuff's not well thought through, and once we think it through better, we're gonna start to get some real speed, but finally we have the infrastructure. Like I'm so happy with this infrastructure. I'm so happy that like you can write this and hopefully this is all like super understandable to you, right? And you see what we're messing with here. We're messing with like upcasting loops, right? So like what I can do here is upcast a loop um, and you can see that it's an unrolled loop, right? Like look at the difference between this and this. We unrolled that inner loop there and that's why this is purple, not red. Um, let's try, well, like, you know, I can't really reshape it to that. Is it just permuted to shit? It is permuted to shit. There's not any like weird divisions or anything, so I guess it's fine. Okay, so let's reshape it to something like 4096. Well, okay, let's just hand code them. 496, 56, 56. Plus that does nothing. Keep two upcasts. Does upcasts. Let's split this out to, what's the warp size on Mac? Let's put a 32 there. Now this isn't gonna be good yet because it had to combine things. But now we can take this 32 and we can permute it. I'm gonna say one, zero, one, two, three, four, five. Right, and now that one's gonna be at the end there. Um, oh, let me just uh, also add the baseline. Yeah, we'll get there. What was the baseline again? The baseline's 89 gigaflops. So if we can beat 89 gigaflops, we are, as they say, winning, son. Um, Okay, so it seems like what this thing did in practice was take, took seven for me, it took eight from each of those, okay? So let's go seven, eight. This one actually only took two, we'll say 56 divided by eight, 56 divided by eight. I think I have some helper functions to make this stuff easier. Um, This one we want zero, two, four, one, three, five, and then seven, I don't know, six, seven. Okay, now this matches, but those have to be local dimensions. So I say lim dot local, no, it's not local dims. I forget how to do this. Oh, it is local dims, never mind. Okay, three locals. Okay, okay. All right, 111. Uh, okay. Now let's make it faster. So I think my first thing to try is to make this two bigger. Let's try making that eight. Hey, it's faster, look at that. Let's go to 16 or something. Uh, 
we'll call little chomp eight. This little chomp here. Three, that's worse. That's their values for Big Chomp and Little Chomp. I'm just gonna match here encoded optimizations. Like you see what I'm looking at, right? I'm looking at this thing down here. Yeah, so that's the same as that. Okay, let's try something like this. we need an optimizer like a real optimizer so I do have one we did build an automatic optimizer but it kind of sucks and it doesn't work in this workflow I'm surprised I can't hit anything better doing this by hand By the way, we can always say debug equals five and we can look at the disassembly of the shader. F comp sells a lot of those. Doing automatic sub expression elimination. Oh, is F comp sell how it does a max? Is there an F max? If it's this. <laughs> So we can just, like the beautiful thing is, look, we can just change this like right here. Like, should it be F max? Maybe it should be F max. No, same F comp cell garbage. Wow, but that's what it's using? I guess that makes sense. Okay, that, I mean, that's just the op for a max, F comp cell. Yeah, I run it 10 times. I don't think they differ much. Okay. best we've been able to do. I don't have any weird divides. Probably doing pretty good common sub-expression elimination. Mm.
try this. Um, man, I had hope for that one. Hmm. It's not coalescing those rights. It should be. See what's not doing that as a as a store four. That should be a store four. None of the reads are are grouped either. Okay, 86, I mean, that's kind of good. So now they're grouped. And why wasn't I grouping them before? Okay, maybe I just picked a particularly shitty kernel to try to optimize. You see that we also have gated loads here. Surprised further upcasting didn't help. And also, why does this not coalesce? Why did that not group? They're clearly in order. And there's eight of them. See, look, we have bugs. We're finding bugs. I don't know if it would be better, but... What is this kernel? Why does it even exist? This is a max pool? It is a max pool. How is this slow? It should be fast. Oh, we have another thing we can try too. We can try also just permuting dimensions. Okay. Let's go back to what we had. Uh, three opcasts, two local dims, big chomp two, little chomp eight. Okay, so we can try something like this. So we want to put like Ah, 108 G flops. Look, it's faster. Okay. Now what we did was we put this dimension first. 
And actually, I have a theory that if we do the same thing with the locals, we're going to get the same gain in performance. See, someone should make like a cool interactive game out of this, you know? There's like really cool visual ways to represent all of this. Okay, we're getting 86 flops. But now let's try increasing and decreasing that. 36. Lame. Ninety. That's pretty good. Why isn't that? Oh, that's okay. That's clear why it's not coalescing. Because those aren't in order. Print that out with debug equals two. Piku. All right, eight times eight times eight. Six to four. Five twelve. So we should be able to set big chomp to sixteen, I think. Sixty-nine, no. Hmm. Okay, well, I mean, it would suck, but we might have to start thinking. And that's the worst thing. Oh, I hate when you have to think. I'm just saying permuting the locals didn't help. If anything, it made it marginally worse. Maybe six. This looks the same. Here's an interesting fact. It's doing an awful lot of math. It's just identical. Yeah, I would have really thought that like upcasting more would help. Okay. Let's try this. We can try just like upcasting a little bit. Can take like four out of each of those. Seven sucks because you can't really divide it. Um, okay, let's try something very different. Let's add a four here. So put four here. Now we're going to do four upcasts and three locals. Um, that. that didn't help. Okay. We're at least doing that. Let's take a look at the kernel and see if it doesn't have. Okay, look, I like that it's doing these. Um, I don't know what these, these are all the ads for the end thing, because for some reason it didn't fuse the stores. This is doing a lot less than them when it has that. Okay, let's just increase big chunk. Maybe this will work. 
Come on. Nothing faster. All right, we're gonna have to start getting into like analysis and thinking. And you want to get more? Okay. You know what? What am I doing, boys? What am I doing? Did I build an optimizer or did I build an optimizer? We built an optimizer. Why am I doing stuff by hand? Doing stuff by hand is for plebs. We have computers. Why would we do anything by hand when we have computers? Oh, come on. Get rid of this fancy stuff. Might want it back. We actually made some good progress there. Oh, I forgot we could also chomp the. Uh... Okay, so this is zero, two, four. This is one, three, five. And then this is six, seven. We do two upcasts and three local dems. Does upcast just what does upcast actually do? Just increases upcast. Okay, good. At least we're not doing any pleb shit by hand anymore. We already found a faster one. Man, there's two things that are amazing. One of them is search and the other one is optimization. Fuck yeah, boys. Oh, we found a fast one. 118. I think that's kind of what we had before. Wait, that's exactly what we had before. We already hit the optimal. It was terrible. Wait, 130? Is that real? Or are we just getting, oh, okay, it seems pretty reliable. Interesting, okay, so we do one last upcast. Okay, not doing the upcast is actually faster. Well, that's a good lesson. 
Big Chomp and Little Chomp were already right. Be the optimizer. Okay, so it's faster to not do the upcast. That's interesting. And let the compiler take care of it. Mm, maybe we want no Big Chomp. No big chomp is faster. Stop doing big chomp. I mean, I'm kind of out of ideas. What else divides seven? What else divides 56? Do any other numbers divide 56? I mean, 14. Fourteen suck. Okay, and now we're up to one thirty-nine. That's pretty good. Okay, well now we know the magic values. Turns out it was eight, one, and uh, zero. Good. Through careful work. We discovered eight one zero. Oh. Okay, I have I do have one more theory. Wait, what, why does it suck now? Oh no, because it wasn't eight one zero, it was little chomp one. Big chunk one. Doesn't look as good as it used to be. I'm only getting 106. Okay. I have one more theory. The number of operations is the same with all of them, yeah. Uh, okay. We're not gonna waste time anymore with Big Chomp, because we know Big Chomp sucks. But if we do Little Chomp, we bring back the divide by four. And we do it in a different order. I have one more theory. So 
So here we want to do 0, 1, skip 2, 3, 4, skip, got it. Now we put in these two, so we put in 2 and uh, 5. Now we put in the last two, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And now we put in 3 and 6. Let's see if that even runs. Mm, I forgot when it's got a pen button. Okay, it gives us a pathetic nine gigaflops, but now let's do lin.upcasted plus equals two and see what that looks like. All right, now lin.locals. Thirty-seven, not much gigaflops. Nineteen gigaflops. Oh, and the fusion broke. Oh, I see why the fusion broke. Oh, that's just dumb. Oh, one of them should be four, maybe. That kernel looks fast. It just isn't. Seems like a fine thing to have as a global dimension. Pretty good. I don't know. Pretty happy with that. That's the one it finds. Look at how repeatedly it finds that kernel, which is cool. It's always that one. Uh... 
actually we should do Still finds that one. This turned out to suck. This turned out to suck. Okay. So we have our kind of debug library here. You can just call it debug, right? So now if we run it with debug equals one. See, it prints the kernels. And if we run it without debug, it just takes a little bit and gets you that kernel. Okay, let's re-enable all the kernels. See, we got that beautiful 139 there. Okay, so we saved 0.2 milliseconds. Why did we focus on that kernel? That kernel wasn't the problem. This kernel is the problem. Why didn't we focus on that kernel? Hmm. Look at how complex this shit gets. Wow, hand coded optimizations is really good. Uh, If you run it with debug equals two, you'll see it prints the op tray. Okay, so we have an automatic optimizer. Um, but unfortunately, it kind of sucks and it's written like in an old way and was like hooked in badly. But now we can start hooking these things in well and we can start actually focusing on building a good optimizer. Uh, okay, it is morning and uh, I got things to do. Um, let's see. First model run to init the weights, they are saved in C. These are kernels of the model. Okay, good. Um, Hmm, I don't need that.
I love how repeatedly that gets 180. Great, we saved 0.1 of a millishit. We should have focused on this kernel. This kernel could have saved us real time. But no, we focused on this kernel. But we did make it about 10% faster, carefully, by doing chomps. But what's important is that we all learned because knowledge is power. And if you have knowledge, you have power. Um, beautiful. Uh, the program, great. Well, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, any questions? Okay, and now, all right. So guys, you see this? Um, it should be pretty easy to make this, you can just change the metals to something else if you want to do it on the GPU or something. Um, so yeah, you can change the metals to other buffers and you can run this pretty much anywhere. Uh, so these are compiled backends that use linearizer. Uh, we have an LPM backend, we have a Clang backend, so you can do all the same stuff in, in C um, instead of GPU. And the whole library is uh, 4,416 lines. Uh, so I gave up on 1,000 lines. The new goal is 5,000 lines, but you can see the library does a lot more, and the 1,000 lines was just leading to, to terrible pricing. Um, Mad Dog Nation, thank you for gifting subs. I forget the name of the other person gifting subs, but I appreciate you too. Um, power is power. A is A, guys. Didn't you read Anne Rand? <laughs> uh, let's push this. All right, we'll let the non-subscribers ask on-topic questions. If I end up talking about my opinions about Portugal, we messed up. Look, we coded, guys. We coded. Look at that. Um, I'll merge that in, assuming the test pass. But I really like how this brings everything, like, up to the front, and I want to make more of Tiny Grad basically look like this, right? Like we have a lot of stupid. There's a lot of stupid stuff um, that like doesn't look like this. Like look here, where I create the buffers. Right? This isn't some like it's in some stupid place right now. We can put all the buffer creations in a single place, and then we can quickly walk the graph and figure out which ones we need and don't need, right? Like. The power of this stuff is how easily it all like works together. It's also like very usable on its own. Like this is the metal backend. It's short and very generic. Um, we can always work to make things more generic, but these parts should be usable outside TinyGrad too. We've written pretty much every part of a full deep learning stack. Uh, by the way, here like we can look at the code for ResNet fifty. You'll see that it looks like PyTorch code. Um, we go down through the PyTorch code into the scheduler. Um, then we linearize, we output code, we compile the code, run the code, and we're doing it in 4,400 lines. Um, I don't know, you know, you know I struggle with thinking TinyGrad's a waste of time because like a lot of things that look like TinyGrad are a waste of time. Um, no, there's no C++, it's all Python. A lot of things that look like TinyGrad are a waste of time. A lot of these like passion project libraries, like, look, I know this stuff. And don't think I'm, you know, for however hard I am on other people, I'm way harder on myself, guys. Not like I really mean that. Um, so, you know, I, I ask myself, like, is this dumb? Uh, why is Torch faster? Okay. 
Torch isn't, Torch doesn't have, okay, Torch in a lot of ways is a much less capable library than TinyGrad. And I, I know you aren't gonna quite believe that, but I'll explain why. So Torch, for example, doesn't have an implementation of a convolution. Uh, Torch will call out to a library like CUDNN. Um, CUDNN has been hand optimized and not hand optimized by a guy on stream for 30 minutes. It's been hand optimized by probably 20 NVIDIA engineers for, you know, 10 years, right? Like 200 man years went into optimizing the kernels of CUDNN. And like, that's not an exaggeration, right? That's exactly correct. Um, I mean, you can think about how many people do you think work on CUDNN? I mean, it's a pretty big deal. And like, it's kind of worthwhile until you remember the bitter lesson. Okay. So everybody should read this document. This is, and I really like that he went to work with Carmack. Uh, you know. Um, can I just call CUDNN? Can't we integrate the same mechanism into TinyGrad? No, because that's how you become PyTorch, right? Whenever you ask for a link, just Google it. Like, um, you're a subscriber. So I'll post the link just for you because you're a subscriber. Um, so yes, can we call CUDNN? Yes and no, right? Uh, like, it, I mean, it's not a bad question, but when you've done that, you've now run into all the same problems with PyTorch, for example. CUDNN can't fuse the convolution kernel with every activation function. So you're going to end up doing the convolution kernel and then the activation function and doing an extra round trip to memory. So like, yes, you can make things faster tomorrow by borrowing from those 200 NVIDIA man years. Or you can write a generic optimizer, understand all the tricks they've you're using, and remember the bitter lesson. And then what you're going to end up with is going to be so much better and really so much simpler to reason about. Um, we can do these huge searches offline, right? Like really what we want to do is we want to learn a model that looks at the shape trackers and says, here's how you optimize that kernel, right? And we can just bake that model into TinyGrad. We can train different models for different devices and TinyGrad can train its own model as it improves and then we get recursive self-improvement. Don't worry, don't worry, Eliezer Yudkowsky. You know why optimizing compilers are safe and it's because they reach a fixed point. Um, but, Someday we're not going to reach a fixed point because we're going to put AGI inside TinyGrad and it's going to continue to improve. Th Look, sometimes I think that TinyGrad's the last piece of software like we're kind of ever going to have to write, right? Or at least like the final AGI runs on TinyGrad. You know what I mean? Um, mu zero, yeah, something like that, right? Like, the, what is TinyGrad? Well, you know, man. AGI will run in 4K lines. It was actually Eliezer Yudkowsky. I asked him. And he said that he thinks it's going to be 10K lines. And, uh, well, not if it uses PyTorch, but if it uses TinyGrad, maybe. <laughs> um, but yeah, so once you start calling out to all these libraries, you now have big black boxes you can't reason about. That's the real problem with it, right? Every piece in TinyGrad you can reason about. And you have to be able to reason about in order to make it better, right? Why has it taken 200 man years to write CUDNN? Do you have to pay to use the TinyGrad library? You have to pay, yes. Yes, you, you have to pay. Everybody else can have it for free, but since you asked, you have to pay. My PayPal is geohot at Gmail, and you can PayPal me 350. Uh, will there be a part two of the debate? No, I'm not doing debates anymore. Uh, doomers win. Okay, guys, the AI doom is real. We're all dead, all right? Guess what? You were all going to die anyway, right? The weirder thing is living forever because nothing lives forever. Haven't you heard about the heat death of the universe, right? That's what I never got into. You know, with the Yukowski debate, he's talking about time doesn't matter. Why does the time matter? Why does the time matter? Well, if it's close to the heat death of the universe, you know, like how long did you expect to live anyway? We had a good, we had a good run. No, Foom's not real. Don't worry about that. But the Doomers are mostly right. The AIs are going to come. And like, you know, it's not gonna be quick and it's not gonna be sudden, but well shit, man, you know, like there just ain't that many monkeys. I mean, there's still a lot of monkeys and I guess they're doing fine, but like, you know, 
no one looks at monkey civilization as the pinnacle of civilization, but it's still going to be so cool. I don't know. I don't want to talk about AI Doom. How do you get me on that shit? Yeah, but what about Portugal? All right, thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you. No, 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 we got to go. No, we got to go. Why do people think AI is dangerous? Because an AI robbed them in an alley once. Oh, wait, no, that was a... Wait, no.